next question so which of the following adr diuretic and adr adr is adverse drug reaction is correctly matched we have chlorothiazide that is one of the thiazide diuretics chlorothiazide that is one of the thiazide diuretics that is uh, is given hyperkalemia acetazolamide it is causing hypercalcemia furosemide hypercalciuria and uh, spironolactone that is causing metabolic acidosis okay so let us first go and try to discuss the important side effect of the diuretics and what are the side side effects of all the diuretics so remember important site of the diuretics that we know important site if i tell you that on the proximal convoluted tubule which diuretic will be working if you know already on the proximal convoluted tubule the diuretic that is going to work will be your carbonic anhydrase inhibitor this carbonic anhydrase inhibitor often unusually be causing loss of water loss of water loss of sodium and loss of bicarbonate now usually remember we are not worried about sodium why because if you inhibit the sodium reabsorption at the proximal convoluted tubule they will be reabsorbed from the later part of the nephron because we have let's say loop of henle where we have sodium potassium two chloride and we are also having a distal convoluted tubule where we are having sodium chloride and also in the collecting duct also so we have multiple more space and place from where sodium can be reabsorbed but the problem comes for the bicarbonate where the, wherever there is a problem with the bicarbonate that means if you inhibit the reabsorption of bicarbonate at the proximal convoluted tubule the bicarbonate will not be reabsorbed and therefore this loss of bicarbonate will lead to two important thing one will be inside the body bicarbonate will be lesser leading to metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis and urine once again the bicarbonate will be more so there will be bicarbonate urea that will be leading to urinary alkalosis so remember this one drug carbonic anhydrase inhibitor by the name of drugs like your acetazolamide dorzolamide brinzolamide all of them are carbonic anhydrase inhibitor acetazolamide brinzolamide dorzolamide hai na benzolamide they are carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and they are going to cause metabolic acidosis and urinary alkalosis so what we understand here that they are one of the urinary alkalinizer they can cause alkalinosis or uh, no, alkalinization of the urine and that is why we also use them in a patient with the एसिडिक ड्रग पॉइजनिंग एसिडिक ड्रग पॉइजनिंग में भी हम कार्बोनिक एनहाइड्रेस को यूज करते हैं इनफैक्ट इफ आई हैव टू समराइज द इम्पॉर्टेंट यूजेज ऑफ दिस कार्बोनिक एनहाइड्रेस इनिबिटर आई कैन टेल यू दैट द यूजेज कैन बी रिमेंबर बाई द वेरी सिंपल नेमोनिक कॉल्ड मेगा मेगा आर द वेरी सिंपल यूजेस मेगा स्टैंड फॉर योर माउंटेन सिकनेस मेगा स्टैंड फॉर योर माउंटेन सिकनेस it can also be utilized for epilepsy like catamenial epilepsy it can also be utilized for the glaucoma drugs like your dorzolamide it's a very preferred very mild drug for pediatric glaucoma right and also we can use it for the alkalinization of urine so alkalinization of urine will be mainly required in acidic drug poisoning it will be mainly required in the acidic drug poisoning so usually in acidic drug poisoning we do forced alkaline diuresis using soda bicarbonate hai na kya use karte hain we do forced hai na alkaline diuresis using soda bicarbonate but we can also use carbonic anhydrase inhibitor these are the different uses right and remember the mnemonic is going to be mega and i was discussing here the side effect they are causing metabolic acidosis urinary alkalosis iske alawa the other side effect that they can cause apart from this other side effect that they can cause these are the side effect they can lead to paresthesias they can cause paresthesias of the upper limb lower limb lower limb and upper limb ka paresthesia kara sakte hain ye theek hai that is going to be your carbonic anhydrase inhibitor they can also increase the risk of renal stone risk of renal stone ke risk ko bhi also they used to increase hai na we are discussing mainly at the level of pct only there is no space here so i will discuss some important points on the next slide we have diuretics next that is going to be loop diuretics and we have diuretics that is by the name of thiazide diuretics loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics these are the other two diuretics loop and thiazide diuretics the so loop diuretics as a diuretic the name itself is loop that means they are acting mainly at the thick ascending limb of loop of henle thiazide diuretics they are going to act mainly at the early part of dct that is distal convoluted tubule they are going to work loop diuretic they act by blocking a co transporter called sodium potassium two chloride co transporter thiazide diuretics that we have they are going to act by blocking nacl co transporter nacl 
co-transporter ko they act by inhibiting NaCl co-transporter. Now, what are the loop diodes that you know? Important loop diodes that we know is known as your furosemide, furosemide, torsemide, furosemide, torsemide. There are many other, you know, like ethacrylic acid and all. We are not writing uh, everything about those, you know, important ones only. And under thiazide diodes, we are having hydrochlorothiazide. We have drugs like your hydro chlorothiazide hydrochlorothiazide chlorothalidone that is one of the longer acting on and because chlorothalidone is one of the agent that is having longer t half life chlorothalidone is having longer t half life remember this chlorothalidone as a drug is having longer t half life it is more commonly utilized it is going to be more commonly utilized and now we have other drugs like your indapamide we have drugs like your indapamide and we are also having drugs like your metolazone indapamide and we also have drug like your metolazone so these are the other compounds that we have under the thiazide diuretics and all these diuretics be it loop diuretic thiazide diuretics they share some common side effect and some of the like let's say uncommon side effect so important side effect if you are going to see they both of them they both of them they will be causing loss of sodium so there will be hyponatremia hypokalemia hyponatremia hypokalemia or kya cause kar sakte hain ye they can lead to also you know, <coughs> metabolic alkalosis the diuretic that was causing acidosis the diuretic that was causing acidosis was metabolic acidosis that was carbonic anhydrase inhibitor mainly mainly remember i am using the term you know? so loss of sodium loss of potassium they can also lead to metabolic alkalosis in addition to that if i tell you your loop diuretics they also cause they also can decrease iske alawa iske alawa iske saath they will also cause decreased amount of calcium as well because what we know loop causes loss of calcium so if the calcium will be excreted in the urine can i call this one as a hypercalciuria look at the term that i am using hypercalciuria and this is the exact term what examiner also prefers for your examination no? hypercalcemia i have written hypercalciuria so hypercalciuria means more and more loss of calcium okay that is hypercalciuria okay what about what about loop diuretics ke baad thiazide diuretics potassium metabolic uh, alkalosis ye dono ke sath common hai inke alawa inke alawa they will also increase the level of uric acid therefore they can actually precipitate gout so one of the very famous question that they also ask about and should be avoided in gout patient that that we have it can also increase the level of glucose now glucose level but the risk is much lesser as compared to thiazide diuretics so they can also increase the glucose level hyperglycemia and they will inhibit the loss of calcium so the level of calcium will also be higher the level of calcium will also be higher so they can lead to hypercalcemia hyperglycemia and increase in the uric acid level on the other hand if i talk to all of you guys that loop diuretic was causing loss of calcium loop diuretic was causing loss of calcium this explains the fact that why in examination when the examiner asked that which diuretic is preferred in a patient with a renal stone and which diuretic is contraindicated so here we have the answer to both the question this is going to be contraindicated in a patient with the renal stone patients why why are they contraindicated in renal stone patient let's understand why are they contraindicated in renal stone patient let's say this is the kidney that we have right this is the kidney that we have and already some stone present maan lijiye is kidney pe already kuch stone present hai some stone already present and you are going to see that you are going to give a diuretic that is causing further loss of calcium so more and more calcium will be coming and where is this calcium will get excreted excreted they will pass through the renal parenchyma and this stone which is already pre calcium will also pass through this and there will be precipitation saturation of the calcium in the parenchyma and they can actually increase the renal stone size isliye renal stone patient mein we actually do not give loop diuretics and also they are going to be contraindicated in a known hypocalcemia patient agar koi hypocalcemia patient hai to we should not give loop diuretic because hypocalcemia itself is a emergency condition and you do not give a diuretic that further uh, increase or precipitate this emergency this one thiazide on the other hand this is going to be a preferred diuretic in a renal stone patients in renal stone patient and they are preferred diuretic also 
in a known case of preferred diuretic in renal stone patient preferred diuretic in a patient with the hypocalcemia history hypocalcemia ki agar history hai or if the patient is having hypocalcemia which diuretic can be used we can use thiazide diuretic remember i am using the term which diuretic will be used i am not saying that uh, thiazide diuretic should be used for the active management nahi maine ye kabhi nahi bola thiazide diuretics is a very slow acting diuretic it's a long acting diuretic hypocalcemia is emergency in emergency you cannot afford you cannot give the slow acting diuretic so you need to give a faster acting agent like calcium gluconate is something that you can utilize in this patient right so i think ki ye sari baatein loop and thiazide diuretics hi yahan pe uh, clear hoti hain and all of you guys have got this one uh, let me just put this a uh, little more sent to ye aap aaram addition to this remember we are also having one more kind of diuretic that is called your potassium sparing diuretics potassium sparing diuretic that we are having are going to be remembered by the very simple mnemonic of seta seta that is stand for your spironolactone spironolactone aplerenone spironolactone aplerenone we are also having drug that is known as your triamterene and amyloride triamterene and other one is known as your amyloride so this is going to be your potassium sparing diuretic and you can remember very easily by the simple mnemonic of seta now there is one more thing that i will add to this one that is upar wale dono that is spironolactone and aplerenone that we have upar wale dono spironolactone and aplerenone they are mainly your aldosterone receptor blocker and niche wale dono triamterene and amyloride they are the epithelial sodium channel blocker i would say enac blocker epithelial sodium channel blocker or i would say enac blocker hai na so these are potassium sparing diuretic they are associated with some of the important side effect for example if i ask you their important side effect because they are potassium sparing uh, they are often added with other diuretics uh, like because all the other diuretic will be causing loss of potassium they are the only one that is going to save the potassium so they can increase the risk of hyperkalemia and that is why they should actually be avoided with any of the ras system inhibitor what is the ras system inhibitor any drug that is coming under the ace inhibitor any drug that is having arb property ace inhibitor arb is sare ke sare drug they cause hyperkalemia they all cause hyperkalemia so with them we should avoid them but with other diuretics yes we can use them with other diuretics what are the other side effect drugs like your spironolactone remember guys they are having anti androgenic property because they have a metabolite and the name of the metabolite is canrenone canrenone and 7 alpha spironolactone now what is canrenone they have anti androgenic property a detailed discussion of this will be doing definitely once we go and talk about renal chapter in your live and also in the recorded session but as of now remember that spironolactone ka ek aisa metabolite hai which is enemy of your androgen your own you know manly hormone so they can give rise to the gift of gynecomastia ye kya देते हैं द गिफ्ट ऑफ गाइनेकोमेस्ट्रिया है ना प्लस एक दुख भरी दास्तान डिक्रीज इन द लिबिडो एज वेल ठीक है सो गाइनेकोमेस्ट्रिया डिक्रीज इन द लिबिडो अगर फीमेल की बात करें तो देर कैन ऑल्सो बी मेंस्ट्रुअल इरेगुलरिटीज कैन ऑल्सो बी सीन menstrual irregularities can also be seen so this is about your potassium sparing diuretic specifically spironolactone or agar kisi patient ko ye gift mil gaya spironolactone ka gift mil gaya then you are supposed to shift this patient to aplerenone aap is patient ko kahan shift karoge aplerenone pe shift kar dijiye because they do not have any anti androgenic property one more mcq that i can squeeze down from this topic is amyloride as a drug it is considered the drug of choice in a patient with the lithium induced diabetes in diabetes amyloride is a drug that is considered the drug of choice in a patient with diabetes in diabetes one more mcq that i can squeeze see every point can be a very potential mcq and when you solve pyq you will, you will realize that how beneficial is this discussion because uh, all the high yield points and any question that has been asked in the previous 4 5 year on this topic is being covered here right spironolactone is a drug that is also util lies in a patient with a chronic congestive heart failure and remember they have mortality related benefit they decrease the mortality as well which drug is this this is spironolactone okay so they, they both can be utilized spironolactone aplerenone as a matter of fact ye aldosterone receptor blocker ke bare mein baat ho raha hai so again let's read the option once again chlorothiazide is a thiazide diuretic so they are going to cause hypokalemia 
you know, not a hyperkalemia, they will be causing hypokalemia. Any role on the calcium, which diuretic was causing hypercalcemia? It was a thiazide diuretic that was increasing the risk of calcium and loop loses calcium, so loop causes hypokalemia. So again, this is also wrong. Estazolamide does not cause hypercalcemia. Furosemide, furosemide is a loop diuretic. Loop loses calcium. Where will they lose? In the urine. So we call them hypercalciuria. What do we call them? Hypercalciuria. Is pyrolactone leading to metabolic acidosis? Yes, it can cause. But do remember the metabolic acidosis that we have as a side effect. Metabolic acidosis as a side effect is mainly going to be associated with urine. They will have much much lesser risk, much lesser risk. So, if you C will be more preferred as compared to D. True answer is possible here, but C is always going to prefer. So, most correctly match, most correctly match is going to be your furosemide leading to hypercalciuria. That is a correctly match. Mm -hmm.